Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, today we're in the garden and we're in the nursery. Uh, I don't need a greenhouse here in South Florida, but I do have this shaded covered area if you haven't been here before and haven't seen that. And I'm going to put my green stock in here for the summer. Today is April 7th, I believe. And I'm going to show you how I amend my green stock and how I am, have been um, amending the holes where I plant transplants in my whole garden and it has made a world of difference. You know, as you go through the growing season, the soil in the green stalk settles down, so it's always good whenever you change it out to top it off because you want the soil up to the edge. And we're going to do that now. I'm just using this expert potting mix. It's not organic, but it's I'm I'm comfortable with the um, I'm comfortable with the fertilizer that's in there. And I'm going to fill that up to the top. But first, I want to show you what I'm putting in this soil. This is my handy dandy little transplanting kit and I can carry this all around the garden with me. In this I have mason jars full of amendments. I put some labels on them. I have various lids this is actually a Parmesan cheese top lid, you know, when you get the dried grated Parmesan. That's a nice sprinkle or a pour side. I got something similar from Ball for your seasonings and stuff. You can order these. Sometimes you can find them like at Walmart. You can order them on Amazon. And then I just have some regular solid jars for things that I want to spoon out instead of shake out or until I get another Parmesan lid. So here we have all of my amendments in these mason jars, and I can carry them around with my trowel and a little spoon that's in there somewhere. This is just a little tool that came with some seed starting trays. I can carry this all around the garden with me, everywhere I'm putting transplants, and I can have five or six or seven amendments in one thing instead of having to put all those bags into the cart and carry the cart all around the garden. This is so much more convenient. What I'm gonna do in the green stock today, since we're in the nursery and I don't have to carry this around, I'll show you what I'm gonna mend it with. First, I wanna talk about insect frass. Have you guys heard of this? It's new to me. Insect frass is the exoskeletons and excrement of mealworms and that is not only a fertilizer in and of itself, but somehow, I, I really encourage you to go look this up and do some more research. Uh, insect frass, when planted, sprinkle it on your soil when you're planting or you put a pinch in the hole when you put a transplant. You know, sprinkle it if you're going to plant by seeds. And it's supposed to boost the immune system of the plants by putting the plant on a high alert you know, because it can detect that there's uh, some form of insect around because this is the exoskeleton and excrement of the mealworms. That's my understanding. I'm not an expert. I just took a friend's word for it and I have not regretted it. I'm having the best results in my plants this year. Also in this, I have bone meal. Bone meal is really good for root development and fruit development. I also have Worm castings. Worm castings is really good all around for all the, you know, like if you brought a fertilizer and it was uh, like NPK and it would have equal numbers, you know, of all of those. Worm castings is good all around. This is, this is worm poop, you guys. Worm poop and the soil they pooped in. This one here is blood meal. Blood meal is the dried blood of animals. And it is in a powder form. No, it doesn't smell. None of this has any smell. This smells bad. Uh, none of this has any smell at all, actually. And blood mill is a good nitrogen. I also have in here azomite. Azomite you can buy in a bag form. I think I bought like a 10 pound bag on Amazon. R relatively affordable. And azomite is a rock mineral dust. So it puts minerals in the soil. Minerals in your soil not only equals a healthier uh, soil, 
micro, you know, all the good stuff that lives in your soil, but it also equals minerals in your food. I also have in here, I have two lemon trees, but I do have citrus fertilizer for when I'm out in the garden and I need to sprinkle that in there. And I just wanted to share this idea with you. I'm going to put everything in here except for the citrus fertilizer. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on the top and work it in and then top it off with my potting soil. I'm stuck. Okay, so so much for a smooth video. Can you see these guys? Normally, these guys are not a problem. These are pill bugs, but my garden has been infested with them. So I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different in here. This is what I'm using. It's called Sluggo Plus. You can see here, it talks about snails, slugs, and these little pill bugs, and the earwigs. Now, a lot of times, we just wanna leave the garden alone, leave the pest, you know, the bugs alone, and let everything come to a nice balance. <sighs> can I tell you, I have been infested with these pill bugs. They have eaten the bulbs of my gladiolus until the stalks have fallen over. They have eaten all my green beans were in this bed. Every green bean that touched the ground, they ate it. And I wondered why I kept planting zinnia seeds and all these flower seeds and stuff and nothing was coming up. Maybe one little, little stringy little thing. Until I pulled all of the mulch back and found the infestation of pill bugs. So I'm going to sprinkle this just been sprinkling this bait in and around um, my garden area where I see them. I'm going to sprinkle some of this in this as well. And it is, you know, it's, it's going to take them out. Of course, there's still eggs all in the soil. It's not my desire to eradicate them, but when their numbers are super, you know, out of control, they wreak havoc on your plants. They'll eat away at the roots. They'll eat away at the fruits that are on the ground. I've got melons on the ground out here. I'm waiting on the little melon, um, you know, stands you put them on. And I'm waiting on those to arrive. And I just don't want to deal with things eating my food. They can eat the leaves and all that stuff. But no, not my food. Okay, another thing is this is Omri listed for organic gardening. 
This was not supposed to be a pesticide video. This was supposed to be a lovely, fluffy, wonderful, hey, let's plant my peppers. I started from seed video. Okay, she's all assembled. I'm gonna start with these sweet banana peppers. And this is a two and a half inch pot from Bootstrap Farmer, and I am in love with these. I did want to spend, you know, extra money, so I kept buying the cheap stuff. And I would just say I'm so glad that I bought a set of these. And for this, this is super easy. I'm just going to make a hole with my hand, big enough for this to fit in. Plop her down in there. Give her a little press. And hopefully over here we've got good enough sun exposure. I wanted it under the shade. And we'll see. I have never grown peppers in the green stock before except this one that I grabbed at a nursery. It was labeled bell peppers and it's actually snack pepper. So this is my first time. I am going to plant like every every one of these things and I can use some bamboo sticks or something in there if they need trellising up. Hmm. And I'm not sponsored by Greenstalk, y'all. I'm not sponsored by anybody. That's okay. I'm not here to make money. Um, I'm just going to finish this out and then water it in. Okay, she's all done. And now I'm going to fill this thing up with water twice. Let the water drain out twice. Then I'm going to go back and hose everything off and water the edges. Since I've watered it around the outside, I'm not going to fill the top up again a second time. But I saw somebody say that green stock recommends when you're setting up your green stock for the first time that you fill it up twice and let the water run through. I'm just going to do it this way. So over here. In this top row, I have sweet banana peppers. Here I have some snack peppers. These are some miniature zinnia seeds. I think they're called Lilliput. And I'm eager to see what they look like. There's snack peppers over here. Down here is shishito peppers, all on that level. And down here is not pinos. They're like jalapenos, but not hot. And there's one yellow monster, and the rest of it is poblano peppers. So the neighbors are outside mowing, and I got other things to do, and so do you. So I hope you enjoyed my video on showing you how I amend where I plant things, you know, where I put plant starts and stuff in, and amending this green stalk. I wish you happy gardening. Um, just be blessed, y'all. Until next time. Bye. We're going to try to keep this video short. Hey y'all, welcome back to my garden. I'm Sherilyn, if we have a little, 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 little. Cut that out.
Okay.